Good morning, it's Mark Poe. Welcome to this edition of Community Conversations. I actually wanted to get this show on before we hit the month of November. It was not successful, but the show still must go on. So, this morning, I want to welcome my good friend Christina Andrianopoulos. She is the host of City Vibes Metro, also Sixth Sense and Beyond. Very successful paranormal psychic medium show in the area. And also joining us today is the award-winning psychic medium from Best American Psychics, Catherine Glass. And we're going to start with you this morning, Christina. Uh, again, I wanted to get this on in October because I thought it would have been great for uh, the Halloween and, and energy that it exudes. But we're here for the first weekend in November. So welcome. Thank you, Mark. And you're such a supporter of many things that I do because we all just touch the city and, and everybody around us through airwaves or, or TV waves. So thank you so much for giving us this platform. Well, thank you so much for helping me with the show over the years because uh, you know, you've been a, an instrumental part of it and now into going almost into its 12th year already. Wow, that's amazing, that. Mark. That's great. And you know, 50 more years. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? Yeah. Fingers crossed. But uh, you have an event coming up and I wanted to get you in here on this because, you know, we're in a world right now where uh, psychics and mediums and ghost hunting shows, I mean, they are at the top of the charts all the way around. And of course, you know, I had the opportunity to be on Ghost Hunters back in 2006, mm-hmm. and they did a, a story on a former residence of mine up in North County. And, you know, just absolutely enthralling. I worked with a show called uh, Dead Famous with the BBC as well, just mm-hmm. prior to Ghost Hunters, a couple of years prior to Ghost Hunters. So this is something that's really taken off, and it's not uh, taboo anymore, is it? No, it's not. In fact, I took my broadcasting talent, which I've been producing City Vibes Metro for five years, and said, there's another opportunity now to leverage the interest in the psychic, the paranormal realm. And last year, and nothing happens by coincidence, especially knowing that with the psychic paranormal world, I was introduced to Catherine. And one day it just hit me and said, Catherine, would you like to do a TV talk show with with me. And she said, sure. I I mean, I, I don't know. Let's do it. So we put it together. So I used my broadcasting background to put together the show. And basically Six Sense and Beyond is a show that's informative and we um, give the platform to psychic mediums out there because basically our slogan is opening the spiritual world to the world. There's so many people out there who are looking for answers and that's what we want to provide here. And I couldn't do it without a wonderful psychic medium. So Catherine came in into my life and we're doing this show together and it's just skyrocketing to international attention. Good. And I'm glad you said uh, nothing happens by coincidence because I'm a firm believer in that as well, as you know. Mm -hmm. And we are fortunate in this area. We have Catherine today and I can't wait to talk to her, but uh, we have a lot of great psychic mediums in this area. We really do. Gary McKinstry comes to mind, of course. Uh, Everybody knows who Gary is. I just did a show recently on suicide prevention, and they had a psychic medium who was going to help them with their cause and their event. So this seems to be the way to go. Now, this event is coming up November the 20th. It's Mm -hmm. a Wednesday night at Mm -hmm. the Manor. Right. Which is a great place to have any event. Right. It's plenty of parking, a great room. They're giving us the Athenian room. And, you know, I had Catherine scope it out to make sure it's good energy. But the great thing about it also is Sabas Fotia. These are wonderful. They redid the draft house. So now they have over 30 drafts. So anybody can come earlier. It starts, the doors open at 530. And from 530 to 630, we have invited our first season psychic, inner circle psychic and gifted to be there. We've given them tables so people can come and meet a tarot card reader or a palm reader, an aura reader. Crystals are going to be there. Crystal craniums will be there. And it's so fascinating and exciting to go and touch and meet and greet many of our guests that we've given this platform for. And then the main event, the main entertaining event is at 630. We all gather into the Athenian room. We sit down, we relax, and Catherine comes out and hopefully communicates with some wonderful loved ones who have passed who want to get messages through to the guests. There's a lot that you put together here. Yes. She said crystal, which is huge in this realm. I saw a show the other night where somebody had 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 one of those crystal skulls. Yes. And they uh, had a special photography scientific data research center. And if they take a picture of you, Christina, you will see an aura around you. It does not reflect that in inanimate objects until they took a picture of the crystal skull and the aura is coming off of this look like a firework show. It was unbelievable. 
Yeah, well, it really we, is. We have Nicole Lahoos, who's been a guest on our show, and she does aura reading. That's what she does. That's her specialty. So she'll bring her, her device that takes photographs, and then she'll analyze your aura. And it's amazing. You think it's the same for everybody, but I had mine done, and my fiancé had his done. Mine was purples and blues, shoes and indigo. His was orange and yellow and all of that. I said, are we compatible? So she was able to discuss that. So she's going to be there as well. Okay. Plus, our wonderful Renee astrologer, resident astrologer, Chris Flisher, who's been all over the world also with his astrology talent. And he will talk about the alignments of the planets. So many great, great, great gifted individuals. There's a lot of things going on with the alignments of the planets right now. If you take a look at what's happening, uh, Comet Ison comes to mind. Yeah, And uh, it really does affect, you know, doesn't it? Whatever it is, magnetic waves or how people react and, and how people feel and what kind of moods they're in. I mean, it really does. I mean, the moon plays a big part in that. We've known that forever. You could sit and talk about this for hours and hours and hours and still not get bored, not get to the point where it's like, I've had enough of this conversation. We could talk about this for days, to be honest. Well, that's why we open the world to the spiritual world, because many people, that's all they want is answers. So Sixth Sense and Beyond are... Psychic Paranormal TV show that's on every single week. We uh, we have a format where we're not doing the sensational programs that are on TV like now, like Long Island Medium or even Ghost Hunters Ghost. Those are great. But what we wanted to do was do a platform sort of like the Oprah of Psychic Paranormal TV shows. We have a gifted guest that comes on each time so that... People wonder what a tarot card reader, what a tea leaf reader is, what an astrologer really is all about, palm reader, aura reader, everything. And we sit and talk to them and find out how they became gifted, where it came from and all that. Then we offer psychic tips. So because we have our award-winning psychic medium as our co-host, Catherine gives us all psychic tips, how to clear bad energy, how to analyze dreams. It's just fascinating. And now we added a new part called the Psychic Challenge. So we work with the viewers to be able to pick something that we, Catherine's communicating to them, a, an object we're showing. And then after we come back after our break, we say, okay, did, which one did you pick? And it's just a fun and exciting and people are loving it. And as I said, we're getting international attention. And well-deserved. So, again, you can see this for yourself coming up on Wednesday, November the 20th at the Manor. And uh, how do they get tickets, Christine? They can log on to Sixth Sense and Beyond, the six with the T-H, Sense, and spelt out, SixthSenseAndBeyond.com. And there's a secure ticketing uh, link to that. And then go ahead and buy. If early, early bird purchasers are less money than at the door. Okay, as it always is the case, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't want to wait too long. November 20th is right around the corner. So get your tickets now. And we'll come back and reiterate that information. Uh, Christina, I'm going to come back and wrap up the show with you. I do want to talk to Catherine, of course, though. As I mentioned at the top of the hour, Catherine Glass, she is an award-winning psychic medium, and that award coming from Best American Psychics. Catherine, a joy to meet you before we came on the air this morning. I could spend weeks with you. The energy you give off is so positive that (laughs) (laughs) I can't can't even begin to describe it. It really is. I think you could tell if somebody has... Uh, what you have and the attributes that you possess, because you can you can feel it, really can. I? And if you can't, then you're really not living, as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you, Mark. It's really great to be here, and I really appreciate your having me on. So I know you just got back from Mexico. I did. I got yeah. back from Baja, Mexico, two nights ago, where I was filming a television pilot um, with the hopes to create um, a show about healing and spirit communication. That's kind of a different departure of what we're seeing right now. I mean, spirit communication, yes, yeah, like Christina mentioned, Long Island Medium. Uh, again, I mentioned ghost hunters and shows along those lines. Now you have uh, paranormal this uh, ghost go get them over here that and then I'm <laughs> going to stir up the ghosts in San Quentin jail over here and, uh, you know, really try to antagonize it and make it really dramatic and all that. But it, you really you don't need that, do you? I mean, you don't really always need that. I mean, basically what happens is you come in, you can read people. You can you can communicate, and, and that's what they're really looking for. They're not looking for the, the fireworks, are they? And in most cases, they're just looking for answers. Absolutely, Mark. And, you know, we actually had the opportunity while filming this pilot. A lot of amazing events happened. I saw physical phenomena for the first time in my career as a medium and a healer, and coins appearing out of nowhere and water pipes breaking, but it wasn't scary. It was just they're, they're trying to get our attention, and we were there to help heal the situation. And there was an opportunity to stir up the spirit energy. And I actually spoke up and said, you know, that's not what I've signed up for. That's not my focus and direction as a spiritual communicator. We can talk to them and communicate 
with them from love and get a very different response, but still get a response. And indeed, we did do that. Glad you took that approach, too, because it, it seems like if you the more you try to stir it up, the more hokey it can get, especially <laughs> on TV. You know, yeah. come hit me, scratch me, bite me, pull my hair, you know, do whatever. Ghost Hunters wasn't like that, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, too. And a lot of people know that I did the Ghost Hunters thing. They were just looking for evidence, you know, setting up all kinds of electronics all around the place and infrared cameras and right. detectors and this. And they're, they're looking for evidence. There are a lot of shows right now where they do try to antagonize. If you try to antagonize, you better look out for what you're going to get because what you wish for <laughs> it may not be the outcome that you are looking for. It can get dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, I guess is my point. Here. It can, and not only physically dangerous, but psychically dangerous. It can affect your emotions and your physical health. And that's a great part about you that I like. I, you know, you're, just, you're into the communication thing, but you're also into the to the holistic stuff, the, the healing things, and, and using all kinds of different methods that probably have been around for thousands of years, but we've been so medicated throughout our history here in this country that we don't know what's up some days. And Absolutely. <laughs> but these, these methods have been around for a long time, right? Absolutely. Yes. Thousands of years, ancient healing techniques. And we had a Mexican Indian shaman with us on this pilot in Baja, and she led a good portion of our work there because of her ancient training. So it was definitely viable and credible and very much a part of today's what we needed to get done. I think a lot of people are turning to that nowadays. I mean, really, I mean, what are, what are your alternatives? Let's go with something that's been around for thousands of years. If it didn't right. work, it wouldn't have been around for a thousand years. Exactly. Whatever, right? It's like we're, we're remembering. We're remembering what our bodies are able to do and what our minds are able to do and our spirits are able to do. Well, our bodies are energy, aren't they? Absolutely. Electrical and, and, and energy never dies. It only changes form. Right. So we physically, we transform from this physical form into spirit and consciousness. And that is what spirit communication is all about is communicating with that energy. Nobody really knows for sure. There are any, well, there are books, I suppose, and, and movies and whatever, but you know, when, when you, you leave this world and go into the next world, nobody really knows for sure what it's like. You hear stories and you can only tell people that have or tell from people that have had N NDEs, near-death experience. Right, right. And that's the beauty of it to me, Mark, because the mystery is always there. It's ever prevalent. And to me, that's a beautiful thing that we don't know a thousand, hundred million percent, but we each can have our own very beautiful, powerful, visceral experiences that are enough of a miracle for us in our own lifetime to create whatever your paradigm of belief or your thinking about it or your faith. And it can be very healing just to have that experience. Everybody has a different perception. perception. Yes. But I also think everybody has a different, the ending is really a beginning because nobody thinks of death really as the final frontier. They think that there's something else beyond that. Most people do think that. Yeah. Some people do think it's the end and it just goes black. And that's, that's always interesting to me. Yeah, it's interesting to me too because I can, and the experiences that I had, especially in the Victorian mansion in South Gardner where I live for almost eight years and went through all of these different crazy situations. Like you said, things <laughs> wow. appearing. It wasn't like they're jumping out in a sheet and going, boo, you know, that's not right. the way it works out. But I, I have photographs. I have EVPs. I have stuff that you just cannot explain away. Right. So I never was a believer that it just goes black. I think that you carry on. However, way you want to carry on and what you think it is on the other side, I, I think is really up to the individual. Absolutely. And, and, and where, and where their necessary. consciousness is at the time of, of passing, too. You know, I think that there's an opportunity to go in different directions when we cross over, and it has a lot to do with who you are at the time of your death. And I've heard that before, too, from people who've uh, experienced near-death experience. There's a black route, and there's a white light route. And, the and there's an in-between route, route, too, like a kind of if you're killed suddenly and you don't really you're in confusion that's kind of a lot of the spirits we were working with in Baja there was a drowning on a boat accident out in the in the bay there and you know they never had resolve or closure and I don't even know if they knew they had passed so there's a middle area there where you can do healing and help them to open up a, a portal of vortex okay. to go through if they choose to still again they have choice you don't have much of a choice, though, when you're sitting in a room full of people. I mean, it's like a super highway. A lot of people, hey, hey, I want to get on the. It's like a big line for the payphone. When I was in the <laughs> army, I remember this huge line because we didn't have cell phones when I was in the army. Uh, we didn't have computers when I was in the army. I'm dating myself. You old, Mark. I am. I'm getting old, <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> I still have all my hair. I guess I have something going for me here. But there was a line for the payphone to call home a mile long. And it's sort of like the same way when you're, you know, in this situation, you got all these people wanting to call 
from one portal, one destination, that destination being you. So it's hard. You can't really decide on who is going to come through, can you? Well, no, I can't pick and choose. It's definitely not. As my one of my teachers, who I love, John Holland, says, it's not 1-900-DIAL-THE-DEAD. But um, they know, your spirit loved ones know. And those of you who do come to our gallery on November 20th, um, if you choose to do that, your spirit loved ones know that you're going to be there. And they're going to be setting it up already ahead of time to show up that evening. Hopefully I will get to, I mean, in a gallery demonstration, it's hard to get to everyone depending on if the room is 50 people, I may get to, you know, I can't even predict how many because I don't know how many messages are going to come and how long each message will be. I try to be efficient. Um, but I open and say, here I am. I'm, I'm ready to work as an instrument for spirit. And then we go. And that's it. And that's it. And you just communicate to whoever wants to come through. And sometimes spirits were quiet. People who are quiet in life are not so different in in spirit. They'll be quiet. But you can be sure a loud family member will come barreling through and interrupting a lot. And that's where the spirit medium, like myself, has a team that works with them, like a spirit team or guidance who helps me to keep order over there. Like, okay, everybody line up one at a time, please. And, you know, please be clear. And and that's my job is to separate and get clarity as best I can to get the right spirit to the right member in the audience. In the audience. They're not coming through and say, hey, my name's Joe Smith. Uh, That's my aunt sitting over there in the red dress. It doesn't always end up like that. No, it doesn't. But it's lovely when it does. (laughs) But exactly what I was going to say. Sometimes it can end up like that, right? Yeah, it's hard work for them. It's hard work for the spirit. It's, It's hard work for the medium. And I always encourage the audience. I try to help the energy lift in the room because the higher the energy is in the room, the more joy, high vibration there is in the room, the easier there is more energy for the spirits to work with, to communicate from. It's like the difference between dial-up and fiber optics, right? I mean, that's yes. basically the way you, you, you can state it. <laughs> a good analogy, Mark, yes. I just thought of that, too. I mean, I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> Brain's still <laughs> someday, working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some days it works, Catherine, some days. But uh, this is an amazing thing. Again, November the 20th, it's a Wednesday at the Manor. I will get to Christina again in just a couple of minutes and let her give you the information on how you can get tickets because this is going to be a great night. The Psychic Gallery at the Manor. And I know that you've heard of them before, and I bet you, Catherine, there are a lot of people who are listening this morning who say, you know, I've heard of these things before. Eh, I don't know. If they're there, they're meant to be there, aren't they? I mean, they're kind of guided there without them even knowing it, kind of unconsciously. Oh, absolutely, Mark. And sometimes the ones who get the biggest message are the are the ones who don't believe. Right. And, and Spirit is there to help show them. This is Spirit's opportunity, someone from their family or a dear friend can say to them, hey, man, I made it. I'm here. I love you. I'm safe. And by the way, fix your tires or something like that, you know. And um, it's it's okay to be skeptical. Being a skeptic is is smart. It's wise. I mean, I love the ones who come who are already believers and they know and they're open because it's easier to work with the energy when they're open. Skeptic is okay, too. It's skeptic says, show me. Cynic is hard. Yeah. Cynic is Crossed arms, crossed legs. I don't want to be here. This is a bunch of hooey. That's a harder energy to work with because it's it's shut down and it vibrates, honestly, at a lower vibration. So I try to encourage the audience to work with me and to open their hearts and minds as much as possible and just let go. Take with them what works and leave the rest behind. You just mentioned the word cynic, and, and that's what I'm dealing with. A lot of people, in fact, I have a couple that work here with me that are <laughs> like, really? Your house is not haunted. You know, most people think it, it, it was my, my it's because they're fearful. You're, you're, they're scared. You know, they're scared. And you know what the funny thing is? I find out, and I've said this before, too. In fact, I just mentioned this on the on the show like a month and a half ago. I find that the most hardcore cynics are the most religious people. Mm, that's what I call programming. They're trained. Yeah. They're programmed right through their their minds and their crown chakra, if you want to speak my language, um, to be fearful and to have fear and guilt if they don't follow the straight and narrow road of what they were taught. And I'm not trying to be critical. It's just what I believe. And, you know. Oh, I am. (laughs) But you know what the thing is? It's like, okay, water into wine, parting the sea. But you can't believe that there are ghosts that might be available in any area of the world that you live in. You know, that that was my whole thing. And I was raised Catholic, too. Right. I was raised. And I'm not coming down on the Catholics, obviously. I don't turn this into a religious conquest or crusade. Uh, But that's that's what I run into a lot. Yeah. Well, I just want to clarify, too, just for those who come to this gallery. It's not really ghosts we're speaking with. We're speaking with spirits and spirit and ghost can be a little bit different energy and vibration. But the Holy Ghost is mentioned, isn't it? Yes, and the Holy Spirit, yeah, same the Holy thing. Spirit. Yep, so it's yep. the same thing. So that's where I go with this. You got to open your mind. I mean, you know, if you bring it, believe in the supernatural, and you have to believe in the supernatural if you believe in 
the Bible or something. You really do, because there are a lot of supernatural events that went on. The Vatican has a a special division of the Vatican that deals with evil spirits, of course, and, and trying to, uh, you know, poltergeist and things along those lines. It wasn't widely known, uh, you know, earlier, but they do have a part of the Vatican that deals solely with possession. Yes, because that's an energy. Again, it's an energetic consciousness, or it may not even be connected to a person or a human being that lived. It's energy. It's a force. It's a, it's a thought form and a force field of energy that can be disturbing and cause disturbances. And when people get fearful from that energy, that feeds that energy and it gets sure. stronger. Absolutely. So I work in the light. I work from love and light and the highest vibration possible. I call in the angelic realm and guides. And it's just so loving that all of your loved ones want to come through and communicate. And it's really about healing. Because when someone has lost a child or lost a parent or lost a grandparent or any dear loved one, there's grief and there's loss. And it's beautiful to be reassured that, oh, I can communicate with them and life does go on. And that gives people comfort, too. Absolutely. But again, it's not false comfort. It's true comfort. It really is. It's going to be a great show on the 20th. If people want to get in touch with you directly, how do they go about doing so? Uh, I can be found at Catherine with a K. Catherine Glass dot com is my website. And um, you can find how to email me there for to book an appointment with my wonderful assistant, Kim. Um, I have a healing center in Concord, Massachusetts called the Healing Essence Center. And that's a website also, HealingEssenceCenter.com. But it all it's all connected to CatherineGlass.com. And my husband, Jonathan Glass, and I run this healing center for the last 20 years. And we do all kinds of beautiful holistic modalities there. Acupuncture, energy healing, nutritional counseling, all kinds of stuff. What's the most popular part of your business right now, would you say? Or is it evened out? It's uh, Well, I work part-time because I'm a mom. Right. So Jonathan is cranking all the time with the acupuncture. And the uh, he teaches something called the Total Life Cleanse. So he helps people to change their lifestyles, to cleanse long-term illnesses, blood pressure, you know, eczema, anxiety, skin diseases, bone aches, all kinds of stuff um, with that aspect of, the, of our business. But um, my work is full throttle when I work. I'm 100% booked right now I'm booked through January pretty much and it's um psychic reading mediumship and energy healing I also do energy healing I went to the Barbara Brennan School of Healing and I work with chakras and spiritual energy a big big deal now a really big deal now I think people are kind of turned off by the big pharmaceutical companies they're so turned off by the just the the lies over the years and, and how the society has become so medicated. Uh, Absolutely. Oh, ADHD, give them a pill. ADHD, right. So Jonathan, Jonathan works with those kids. He gets them off those medications and onto a supplement program and works with their diet with tremendous success, Mark. And a lot of people come in who, just like you said, are fed up with um, the medical system. They're not getting answers. They're just getting more medicated. And, and Jonathan has worked with them and turned them around and eradicated a lot of their ailments successfully. So it's beautiful to see. And it's good preventative care, too, to keep you out of the hospitals or off the medications. When I was a kid, fluoride was good for you. Oh, it's in the toothpaste. It's supposed to help you keep your teeth nice and white and strong and all that stuff. Now fluoride's a killer. Right. So where did that go? Right. <laughs> I mean, who missed the boat on that? So Well, you know, I'm waiting to hear what, you know, 20 years down the road, is going, we're going to hear from cell phones. <laughs> you know? Oh, I already know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Microwaves. You know, and, microwaves, yeah. exactly. So yeah. there's, there's a lot that you probably have to be dealing with down the line that we're not dealing with right now and i think you're going to see if something like that really becomes a big problem i think you'll see it in the younger sect i don't think you'll see it in somebody my age at this point no right happen because i was brought up without cell phones i was born in 64 so without cell phones without computers without all that stuff we went outside and played right (laughs) no answering machines even (laughs) one overweight person in our school and we were eating pizza every other day in school with Coke. Right. Know? And there was a busy signal when you called and oh well, try again later. Yeah, exactly, you know? <laughs> right? But I mean, you know, you go back to diet in the school back then. I, I can't think of maybe two people that might have been overweight and, and my entire class, everybody was fine. They were uh, running. They were walking. Exactly. And yeah. playing ball. Yeah. And that that's a that's a huge part of it. It's true. Catherine, I'm going to have to have you back on the show sometime because uh, you're you're just an absolute joy. I would love to be. And you know, Mark, I can do um readings on air and people can call in and I can read for them. And that's always fun to do on air too. Let's, let's absolutely try and set that up. Great. Look forward to it. Thank you. Christina, thank you so much for bringing Catherine in this morning. You're welcome. Again, uh, we have a new best friend, you know, I'm glad Catherine can be everybody's best friend. She's just so wonderful. You fall in love with her the minute you meet her. I mean, it's one of those people that you just, yeah, it's like, Oh, I love you. (laughs) I know it's true. She's wonderful. The spirit's great. And you know, we're not here, as I said, by accident. 
there's a lot of work we must do out there. You as a communicator, me as a communicator as well through TV and Catherine's talent and introducing many, many others who don't have a legitimate platform to talk about what they do. And we do that at Six Sense and Beyond, opening the spiritual world to the world. And you're going to be opening it up at the uh, manor come November the 20th, right? November 20th, a very entertaining evening. Doors open at 530. The manor is in West Boylston on West Boylston Street. You can't miss it. Can't you miss cannot it. miss it. And w- the doors open at 530 and we have invited our inner circle, first season inner circle psychics and gifted individuals to be there. Our guests get that special extra little caveat to come in and meet and greet and even have little mini readings if they like or get their aura analyzed or look at crystal craniums, which is a new hot, as you said, topic of crystal craniums in their energy. And there's a woman. Her name is Diane DiPietro. She's a good witch and she's bringing her little products from her metaphysical store, Nathal. We're going to and Chris Fisher is going to talk about what's happening with Uranus and Pluto and all of that. And then at 630, we all sit down in the great room. And then Catherine, we bring up everybody's energy. And Catherine comes out and starts opening herself up to communicate loved ones right before the holidays there you go. that want to communicate. People can just log on to sixthsenseandbeyond.com. There's a secure ticketing link right there. We recommend highly. It, we expect it to be sold out. To so please log on and buy your tickets ahead of time. Or they can, if they want to be on our TV show too, Mark, readings at com. We invite our guests to come and have an on-air reading every single show that we have, every episode as well. People are lining up to come on our show. And that show runs? It's on Tuesdays at okay. 930 on Charter TV 3, but also on YouTube. If they go onto YouTube and put Six Cents and Beyond, every one of our shows then gets uploaded onto YouTube. Great. Beautiful. I want to thank my guests this morning, of course, my good friend, Christina Andrianopoulos, and my new good friend, Catherine Glass, for stopping by Community Conversations this morning. It's Mark Vo. Don't forget, The Manor, November the 20th. It's going to be a great night. Thank you both so much for coming in. I appreciate it. It's Mark Vo. Join me again next week right here for another edition of Community Conversations. Let's make a selection.